getting offered here. One, two, three, four, five provinces. That's still remarkably generous. Like, if the US, United States should really take this. Sorry, go on. Uh, who? Oh, yeah. And yeah, I also wanted to mention some. Like, I watch. Uh, this is one of the reasons I like this uh, community player. I get to play three hours of a game if there's not technical issues. Yeah. <laughs> and then I get <laughs> three hours, if not technical issues, of uh, streaming content, which is nice. Yeah. And I read a chat and I I find it a bit hilarious. Like, at this point, I'm not sure if they're trying to make fewer, um, more wars, but they, the whole them saying, oh, he, the HRE, they want to attack and fewer, they want to attack Russia. Next session, they attack Russia. <laughs> oh, they want to attack the Ottomans. Like, they, they're too scared of him. Next session, attack the Ottomans. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. And I but also think it. Austria has been doing the very, very important job of holding on to Lake Bellaton, though. And now that fuel is not here, we are seeing the effects. Like all the technical issues we had earlier, is because fuel is not protecting Lake Bellaton. It's his fault. Absolutely. <laughs> Damn him. <laughs> and um, it has also been brought up in the last uh, stream, so I thought, like, the whole. British uh, Spain war. Mm -hmm. I mean, the reason Austria didn't get in involved, like for several sessions, he had bad economy, bad uh, technology, and well, his na national ideas are just bad. They're not uh, good. They don't have anything for military, navy, economy, or trade. Who was this? Like, right? Austria. Yeah, Austria. Yeah, I mean, so, Austria's strength is purely diplomacy, which Fuhrer has been doing a very good job with. Absolutely. And like. Um, also, the fact that I, as an elector, was part of it, and just uh, told few Oops, before. Sorry, yeah. sorry, I need to comment on this. All right, so we've got 90,000 from Tunis against 26,000 from the Congo. Congo do have another 30,000 coming in. 117,000, sorry, 117% discipline on both sides, 5.5 versus 5.2 morale. It does look like Tunis just have superior numbers here, and it looks like that numerical superiority is going to win out. So they are taking the minus one from terrain, and they've been taking some pretty hefty damage. If Congo can just keep on inflicting such casualties, then they will be fine. Uh, so, initial war there being won by Tunis, but Congo definitely not out the fight. They've still got 60,000 manpower versus Tunis's 50, and Tunis took a lot more casualties. So, if Congo can fight this as a war of attrition, they might still come out ahead. Sorry. Oh, they're actually making that war? Yeah. Oh. Uh, basically... Me and the Mamluks were about to get right into that, and then we agreed to, no, we're just going to sub and give gifts to them, and they'll do it themselves. Fair enough. And, uh, because enough people have died in Egypt. <laughs> yeah, the Mamluks is definitely one of the real battlefields of the world. <laughs> yeah. What is it, half a million? A million? Something like that. Yeah, it was, it was quite a lot. Yeah, it... That hurt, and like... Both in terms of my own sending my own armies over and over again, and then hiring between three to five different nations. Like, hey, can you guys help out? Oh damn! Well? It, I missed like... another fight. I'm really gonna have to start commentating on this stuff because uh, Inca just lost a fight against Brazil and Andalusia. Yeah. Uh, good luck. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. So um, yeah, it looks like a fight was just lost here. It looks like Inca have been sent packing, so Brazil and Andalusia have got their opening, and they can start taking some territory. The other thing which I wanted to mention was the fact that the United States, towards the end there, was actually getting 100 ducats a month from Hindustan. I also noticed that the United States had a lot of money in their bank, and I suspect that that was because of other um, monies being sent, probably by Hindustan, which has actually allowed them to buy a bunch of plantations and things. Uh, also, we want to talk about the peace deal. So the United States have now peaced out, and they did lose one, two, three, four provinces, uh, over here in Massachusetts, going into Maine. And it looks like true new new Iberia is starting to gain a little bit more strength. America really not punished there by Britain. Britain could definitely have tried to take a bit more territory from them. But I think that this is now freeing Britain up to go and join the war against Brazil and Andalusia, which is where things are going to really start to take off. Uh, the Ottomans crashed in a hot draining. Okay. Good to know. Meanwhile, the other war here between Tunis and the Congo. What was this one over? 
This is the Tunisian conquest of you. Okay. You can go away. We don't want... Accept Europeans here. Tunis isn't really a European, though. That might well have been from previous conflicts against some of the other colonizers. Because the only colonizer that's actually here... Oh, no. Papal states are too. They have a couple of territories. Is that Ivory Coast? That's Ivory Coast. That's actually going to be really strong for Hamburg. There is a lot of money here. And I'm a little bit surprised that Hamburg is not devoting more ships to uh, trade here. Like, this is one of the most, if not the most, important trade node in the world. Yeah, the end node's where you make your money, but this is where you control where that money goes. And this is basically all of Asia's money. There's 70, 90, about 100 ducats coming through the Ivory Coast, and he has no light ships here at all. Like, you could just be sending all of this to the English Channel right now. All of it. That's where Hamburg collects, isn't it? Oh no, they collect in Lubeck. How can you get that to go into Lubeck? I guess you would have to get it going to the Caribbean. And then most of that is being collected by the English Channel. Okay, maybe it's not in their interest to do so. Either go to the Caribbean, Bordeaux, English Channel, or Sevilla. But you can at least deny it from people you don't want to get rich from trade. Land lost by New World Nations to colonial powers like a double blow, though. Not only does it make them weaker, it makes them emergent neighbours stronger and also boosts the overlord as well. Yep. Yes, it does. Something happened in Alaska? No. I'm annoyed I missed that fight. That would have been an interesting one to watch. So Congo is now trying to raise a bunch more troops. 67,000 manpower versus the 45. It doesn't look like anyone else wants to get involved. Uh, Tunis is actually getting a big subsidy from the Papal States. Whereas the Mamluks are subsidizing the Congo. Though not nearly as much. But the Congo is very wealthy because of production. And does just have a bigger income. Neither side has taken loans as yet. Full army size is 107,000 versus 108,000. These two nations are extremely well balanced. I mean, losing the Fort of You is going to be a blow, seeing as it is a level 6. Uh, where's the next fort going to be for them? Oh, all the way down here. Oh, Congo! <laughs> I see that Con Congo has gone to the uh, doctrine of not using forts, really. Like, Tunis has got three of them right here. That's a pretty good choke point. Congo really needed to add some more here. Like, away is a really important position. It's on a river and it's jungle, which would cause problems, particularly for attrition. They're trying to build one in Go, but that's definitely not going to get finished in time. And then this fort is a level 7, but it's not blocking access to the rest of the Congo. So Tunis can just go around the top and just take everything else. You know, there's a reason why I tend to carpet countries in forts, because forts are really powerful. Deterrence of nothing else. I think that's a big mistake on Congo's part. They really needed to fortify themselves better, particularly the coastal areas. I mean, I kind of get it, not going for the internal area, but having just one fort here on the coast and nothing at all protecting down here, that's a mistake. Uh, Ivory Coast, Caribbean, East Coast, St. Lawrence, North Sea, Lubeck, I think. He does have New York and whatever trade. Yeah, that's true. So he could be sending money to Caribbean, where he can then send it north to Chesapeake. Then from Chesapeake, that's still to the English Channel, would have to go to the Gulf of St. Lawrence. He does have control over Gulf of St. Lawrence, potentially. 
I mean, this is where things get a little bit tenuous. And from St. Lawrence to the North Sea to Lubeck. But I think already they've accepted sending the money down to the English Channel from the Dutch. I don't think they're really contesting the North Sea. I think they did come up with an agreement there. But they could do. I mean, they do have an outpost here as well. It's funny how many EU4 players don't like forts. Yeah, I know. It's it's mind-boggling to me. Forts are so powerful. Oop, we've unpaused. And we've paused again. So, how what what state is America in? They're making a good amount of money still. Huzzah! They've really brought their inflation under control. It looked like it was a lot higher. No loans. I mean, their main problem is just a lack of manpower and the fact that they're down to just 13 regiments. But the damage they took there was not critical. The problem that the United States is going to have is the fact that they're just surrounded. It's going to be difficult for them to expand. The United States is going to want to join an anti-British coalition of some kind. Because North America could become a real battleground and a place where enemies of Britain could actually hurt the British. Yes, they can't get to Great Britain because of a lack of naval access, but they can get to the United States most likely. How many provinces does Prussia need to form Germany? Uh, they need provinces from uh, Austria, which they're never going to get. Hamburg, Munchen. Let me zoom in a little bit. So they need Hamburg, which I doubt they'll ever get. Oh no, they don't. I stand corrected. Augsburg, Köln, Nuremberg, Munchen. Which they've just taken a bunch of those from Ulm. So the only one that they're probably not going to get is Hamburg. Oh, and Colon. But this is the Netherlands, and the Netherlands does like doing good business. So they could probably come up with an agreement for Cologne. It's going to be Hamburg that would be the difficult one. Especially because Hamburg's the capital. All right, so we are back in business. Let's take a look down here and see what exactly is going on. So uh, Inca and Texas are going to need to re-gather 14% on the fort here. So they do still have a little bit of time, potentially, to try and take it again. Are we now using defensive edicts? We are now using defensive edicts. And where's the capital? That's still a bit further north, isn't it? So there's still a lot of mountains to be making their way through here. Like, Incan territories are not pleasant to go through. And if we take a look at the attrition suffered so far, oh boy. Brazil and Andalusia have lost 114,000 to attrition. That's almost as much as the Incan side has lost to combat. And they've actually lost 256,000 to combat. So these guys are being absolutely made to bleed for their gains. That's 300 and... 70,000 losses for 175,000. So far. Andalusia are trying to backdoor a little bit. But I'm still very interested in seeing what the British do. Uh, Euran is sending some condottieri for Texas to go and sit in the central uh, Central America and do nothing, just like they were doing in the British War. Did Poland ever take Calais? Yes, they did. 
So I guess the United States won the bidding war. Russia would need Hamburg, Munich, Nuremberg, Kurland, and Augsburg to form Germany right now. Yeah, but the only ones that they don't own, because they just took a bunch from Ulm, is Hamburg and Kurland. Also known as Köln. Also known as Cologne. Oh, it's the Ottomans. These are the Ottomans. Okay, so the Ottomans are rejoining now. Hopefully the AI hasn't completely destroyed their game. Let's go scrolling slowly over to Africa because I'm so zoomed in. This is going to take a while. Do, 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 do. Almost there. Almost there. Here we go. So Tunis has indeed taken Go, which is uh, where I think they were building the fort. It looks like they're building something in a way which might be another fort. But if I was Congo right now, I would be trying to just build forts everywhere. Not literally everywhere, but like create my regular jigsaw of just controlling as much of this land through zones of control as possible and then just fighting a uh, retreating battle against uh, the Tunis as they come in. I'm trying to buy myself as much as time as possible for the forts to build. And as soon as I'm able, I'm going to click on Congo to see if they're actually building stuff. They are building two forts. They're building one in away and one in Go. And Izku. So they're building one in these two provinces. See, that's so close to the front line, I doubt that they'll ever get finished. They need to be building a couple of forts back here to hold the line here and then basically create a new front line over here. I mean, Mum. Um, Umpemba is going to be a good fortified position because it is a level 4. The problem is the fact that your enemy can just go through the top. Probably here in Songo would be a good place. And then maybe down here in Matamba. Yeah, it's a bit more difficult because this is all Savannah. 50, 60, 70,000 against 98,000. So right now Tunis has the numerical advantage. Is Tunis going to start trying to blockade? Because again, we have players not using their navies. You could be driving up the war exhaustion for Congo, and Congo is made up of so many different small countries that they will have separatist issues. They just will. Meanwhile, here we go. Tunis is moving in against the Congo. 40,000 against 20,000. Congo is reacting pretty quickly, but they are not force marching. But then again, neither is Tunis. Uh, this is a minus one because of the jungle. We do have Congo's forces who have now arrived. Full line of artillery in the back. The Congo actually have a much better back line than Tunis do. So they will be in a position to do just more damage. And again, like the casualties being suffered, being very, very close. Actually, Tunis now taking a couple more. And it does look like Congo might be able to hold this. Yeah, it, it looks like their uh, morale is going to be superior. We do have a couple of artillery moving into the front row there a couple of uh, times. And indeed, Tunis is then sent packing. So even though Tunis had the superior numbers, Congo was able to hold. And this does buy them a little bit more time, but it's going to take them two years to build these two forts. That's dangerous. Like, they really need to start building some forts like further behind the lines. Yeah, money is going to be a bit of an issue. This is when you take loans. Like, you need to get those forts up and running. And then if you can secure subsidies from somebody else, then you can use those subsidies to pay the loans off. Congo, meanwhile, is actually doing something very sneaky and starting to attack the back of Tunis. This is actually a good move. And... Tunis... Is, oh, sorry, Congo is actually following up and trying to attack the Tunis army. I'm not sure that's a good move. That's 20,000 against those guys. They are actually at full morale already. Oh, no, they're not. No, they're not. Okay, so they managed to kill a little stack here. 
and just reclaiming some of the coastline. They're not going to be able to retake you, but this is buying them a bit more time to get away and Anziku uh, fortified.